In this video, we will go over how to find the basis for a column space of a matrix. Suppose we are given this matrix A, and we want to find a basis for the column space. So first, what was the column space? It was the subspace that consists of all linear combinations of the columns of A. So it is the span of the columns of A by definition, because the span is the set of all linear combinations of these given vectors. It's not necessarily a basis, because for it to be a basis, you also require that these vectors are linearly independent. So what that means is some of these vectors in here may be redundant. Maybe you can write this vector as a linear combination of these two vectors. Then you would describe the same set without that vector. So what we need to do is verify if these vectors are linearly independent or not. And if they are not linearly independent, we need to see how they depend on each other so that we would know which vectors we can get rid of. In order to check if a set of vectors is independent, we set up the homogeneous equation, and we want to show that the only solution is the trivial solution if they are linearly independent. So to do this, we would form the augmented matrix, but because this is a homogeneous equation, the last column is zero, so any row reduction operation that we would do doesn't really affect this last column. So if we row reduce A, we get the following. This is A in row reduced echelon form. We have two pivot columns, the first two, and we have two basic variables, x3 and x4. So if we write out how the variables depend on each other, we have something like this. Remember, this was for a homogeneous equation. Now, if we write out the homogeneous equation in terms of the columns of A, we get something like this. And since x3 and x4 are free variables, we can set them to be whatever number they want. So in particular, let's pick x3 as negative 1 and x4 as 0. When we do that, we get that x1 is negative 3 and x2 is 2. So plugging everything in, we get that a3 can be written as a linear combination of a1 and a2, where these are the coefficients. If we plug in our actual vectors to confirm this dependence, let's quickly check. Negative 3 plus 6 is 3. 6 plus minus 4 is 2. Negative 6 plus 6 is 0. And negative 9 plus 8 is negative 1. Similarly, we can pick x3 as 0 and x4 as negative 1, so that x1 is 5 and x2 is negative 1, and we get the relation that 5 times a1 minus a2 is equal to a4. So a4 can be written as a linear combination of a1 and a2. So we get that the basis for the column space of A is the first two column vectors. That is, all we need are these two vectors, and they are linearly independent because they are pivot columns. And if we want to get the third column, well, we know that we can write the third column as a linear combination of these two, so it will be in the column space of A. Uh, in general, you don't need to row reduce all the way to row reduce echelon form. All you need to know is which ones are the pivot columns, and then go back to the original matrix and pick out the columns from the original matrix that correspond to the pivot columns. And those will form a basis for your column space of A.